or I'm still unsure about me because I still know my flaws. So maybe this brother and this sister have favor with the Lord I don't have. Let me serve him. Your mind have to really be somewhere else in order to take what it is you have. To make sure that your brother and your sister have. Sit down. Sit down. I bet it seems Charlotte's Web over there. Like, hold on. So, strife and vainglory, let that end. And we may not always agree on every single word and thought, brothers and sisters. Life have a lot of minute details to it, right? But you know one thing that just hasn't been consistent, and I don't think it's by accident. I think a lot of things have been taken out of the way. There just hasn't been a lot of strife among brothers and sisters. At one time, I used to be like, man, who going to show out today? I used to come to a Sabbath class and be like, yo, who going to show out today? Who going to say something crazy? Who going to make an accusation today? Who is going to secretly go over here and have meetings and try to talk to this person and that person and get them against the teacher? Or get them against that brother and that sister over there? That was going on for some time. And I'm like, yo, hmm. But you haven't heard that. That's not a coincidence. I don't really, I'm not going to be emotional about it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at, because if I get emotional about it, then I, I am talking about some people who I love and people who I call friends, if I just get emotional about it. But to look at it for verily what it is, some people was just troublemakers. And some people had their own agendas. And it was better for them to do their own agenda you can't be in a group and do your own agenda. You have to be by yourself and do your own, and your own agenda. Mm -hmm. So it was better for that to happen. And contention died down. And when things do happen, we try to deal with them more or less as loving each other and not accusing and condemning each other and keeping up rumors and this, that, and the third. Why? Because the apostle said through the spirit of Christ, don't let stuff among y'all be done like that. But in lowliness of mind, esteem your brother better than you. Everyone in here is supposed to be looking at everybody else outside of them as the people that they need to serve. And if that's not in you, I pray that you really get into some prayer. If you want me praying with you, if I got any kind of reputation with the Father, it might help a little bit. If you don't want everybody to know, come to me alone and say, yo, man. I got issues. Pray with me. This is what I need. Do that because I'm not embarrassed to help you. I would be embarrassed for everything in the world to fall out that all you had to do was ask for help and your pride didn't let you. And the same go for me. So, brothers and sisters, let us in lowliness of mind esteem each other better than ourselves. And this one is important. Look at this. Brother Judah, verse 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Don't just look on your own stuff, but also, he not telling you to neglect what you have to do for yourself, but you have to simultaneously take care of yourself and be sure to look after the well-being of your brothers and sisters. Every man in here who got a wife got to take care of her to the best of his ability. He ain't saying take care of the church and neglect your wife. That's not what he's saying. You got to take care of your wife and at the same time, you, y'all come together and make sure that the people also are being taken care of. Go ahead, Brother Judah. Um, let this, no, I don't want to read that part. I want to read this part. Um, verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Hold on. Did it tell us we had to do something? Mm -hmm. We are supposed... He is not talk. This letter was not to Philip. What? This letter is to the Philippians. He's talking to a whole congregation saying, you, 
brothers and sisters, together as one and one like mind and one accord, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. But people always use this out of context and say, I got to work. I heard someone talking against the community move say, I got to work out my own salvation with fear and trembling. How did you quote this and say, see, brothers, y'all talking about this, that, and the third, but the scripture told me I got to work out my own salvation with fear. You don't know the word because this was not talking to an individual. He was talking to a congregation and told that congregation, y'all be one. Y'all be like-minded. Esteem one another better than yourselves and work out your salvation with fear and trembling. He's talking to the group. Work out your salvation. You are responsible for each other. Work out your salvation. Work out what it's going to take for your health, your deliverance, your aid, and your welfare. Yeah, or else he would have contradicted himself in 3 and 4. Right? That's right, he would have contradicted verse 3 and 4 and then tell you, worry about yourself. <laughs> he done told you to do everything for each other and then in this verse, this is about you. You just work out you, man. Well, seriously, though. Just work out there. <laughs> yeah, but for real though, no, brothers and sisters, this is not an individual man's personal salvation thing. Right. This is a us thing. Read the next verse, brother Judah, and we'll end it. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure. Continue. Do all things without murmuring and disputing. Amen. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God. The what? The sons of God. If we are the sons of God, that means salvation is in, is in our midst. Go ahead. Without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Not, you do not shine as lights because you go to church. Only by yourself. He did not say, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, when you go to church. No. We shine as lights in the world when they see that love among us, when they see that love that the Messiah said has to be in us, that love he spoke about in John. They shall know you are my disciples when you have love for one another. That was that greater work that caused them to do what they did in Acts. And brothers and sisters, if we stand still, we will see the salvation of the Most High because we love each other. And the people in the world around us will see that love and the, and the tangible fruits it's producing. And that will shine as a light unto them. Our love in Christ can light the path for others. So brothers and sisters, I hope that, that, I hope that explains some more aspects of salvation better. And I hope that we all are edified by what we've heard. And I thank y'all for your time. Thank you. All right, everybody, praise the most high. We're going to stand and we're going to face Jerusalem and close out.